The war goes on on all the fronts. While bombing Ukrainian cities and killing civilians, Russian terrorists continue to spread fakes and try to attack Ukrainian digital resources and even to block regular Ukrainian publications in social media. Almost every Ukrainian is publishing daily photos and videos of disastrous damages in their villages and towns. And almost every day they meet severe response from the Russians who even abroad stay with terrorist Putin regime. The informational battlefield today became possible because of the indifferent position of the social media owners, who's afraid to lose the subscribers even despite the Russian crimes against humanity in Ukraine. For example, Facebook and Instagram didn't hurry to react to war with additional filters, allowing pro-Putin Russians even in the United States and Europe continue to support the murderers. Google and YouTube, on the contrary, provided additional checks for so-called bots and even useful donations and other services for foreigners to help Ukraine. Another attempt of the Russian propaganda machine is to slow down the international anti-war coalition with the old trick with witnesses of bad Ukrainians. In 2004, there were so-called pro-Russian witnesses telling that Ukrainians during the Orange Revolution ate dragged fruits. In 2014, there were witnesses saying that Ukrainians are eating birds and killing children. Now, Russians are killing children themselves and sleeping the so-called witnesses, telling that Ukrainians are racist at the Polish border. Some mass media not verifying information even published those statements, despite there being no evidence for these words. And cannot be. The world is still watching the tragedy in peaceful Ukrainian cities as a movie, not in a hurry to react perceiving it as informational trend, but it is not a trend. It is not an online war, it is for real, including hiding Putin supporters living in civilized countries.